So good evening, everyone. Here we are for another interview in preparation for the Bitcoin Fest. Now only three days away. We're all getting. Oh, everyone. sorry. <laughs> Feedback. <laughs> Mercury retrograde. That's what I blame. Um... It's, def it's definitely live, Victoria. <laughs> it's definitely live. If, ever, if anyone had any doubters, that proved it. We've got checking, all the bloopers just checking. in. No yeah. one can accuse no one can accuse me of not being on time. So um yeah, so just three days away, we're all getting very excited. And um today today we have uh, the privilege of interviewing RMC, often a key person at this event, uh, keeping things flowing in between all of the speakers. Um and so yeah, before you know, without any further ado, uh Chris, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about how you're gonna be contribute contributing to the Bitcoin Fest? Hello, Victoria. Thank you very much for the intro. Um, so a little bit about me then. So uh, my name's Christopher Gordon. Um, I am, I've been in the space since about 2017. Um, I am founder of a meetup down in the south of England called Bitcoin Surrey and also co-founder of Bridge to Bitcoin and also Laserize Cards. And I'm also involved in some other Bitcoin ventures, which hopefully you'll hear a little bit about at the, the fest because some of the speakers will be talking about those. Um, and how am I contributing to the festival? Um, I am emceeing, as you said, Victoria. So, yeah, that was that was a, a very um, lovely invitation from the team to ask me to emcee because I originally the story was I originally wasn't going to come along. Uh, because um, it's over the Easter holidays, and my yes. wife had plans for us to oh. go away. And we've got we got friends down in South America, so she had big plans. Said, right, we we need some sun, Chris. It's been raining so much. We're going to South America. I went, oh, that's a shame. Okay, then you win. I've dragged you to enough conferences. <laughs> um, so I said to Chris when he contacted us, I said, I don't think I'll make it. Um, but plans changed. My wife didn't book. Um, which was uh, kind of um, kind of great and kind of not so great because we were heading to South America. I was thinking, yeah. oh, I could stop off at El Salvador en route. Oh. Um, so I did have plans to stop off in El Salvador. And then my my low time preference reeled me back and went, no, I can go to Nottingham and save a whole load of sats instead. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when I spoke to Chris and Mitch um, on, a, on a Zoom call with yourself and other organisers, um, you, uh, there were already enough speakers and there was no need for me to to be an additional speaker but um you guys didn't have an mc so the the invite was put out and i gladly accepted um and um i was f far down the list i think i think joe Aww. nakamoto was top of the list which Aww. is absolutely absolutely the right thing to do so i cornered him in madeira actually and said okay. how, how could you turn down the bitcoin fest it's ground roots as ground roots conference you know this is this is where it's at and um i said i would uh i said i would have a go at him on the podcast and maybe at the fest itself where he came up with some ridiculous excuse about having to attend a stag party which oh. sounded really fishy in terms yeah. of the location so um so shout out to joe uh, have fun at the stag party this weekend which you're allegedly going to and and we'll see you soon again no doubt so yeah Aww. thanks thanks to chris and mitch for the invite to mc I'm, I'm really looking forward to it well not at all and i know you've been um a huge contributor to other events that we've been to which yeah. is you know how how we all know you i mean i i first met you at avon valley and you were kind enough to come along and ask for a signed copy of my book and yeah. in exchange i bought one of your laser eye um card covers which is great fun um and uh you know you were so kind. And then you invited me down to Surrey because you uh, organize uh, the local Surrey Bitcoin meetup. And so that was fun. And then you so kindly hosted me at your house so that I had somewhere to stay and didn't have to pay for a hotel. And so, you know, just that alone, you know, is a is a huge contribution to uh, supporting the Bitcoin community. And so personally, I'm hugely grateful. But you're also involved with so many other things as well with Bridge to Bitcoin and the laser eye cards. And, uh, you know, I think uh, when I've tweeted out the interview, I've definitely had the most responses when uh, <laughs> with all the uh, likes and follows, which just goes to show, you know, the power of 
the power of your retweets. Uh, so that's been so that's been really good. So um, yeah, you know, having these really well connected people, um, you know, because I know you're friends with probably friends with Simon and James as well, all all kind of creating your own little collective around Bitcoin, you know, and all the people you're connected to, you know, it really helps to have all these people who who understand what Bitcoin is and is working so hard to make it a success. So I'm really glad that your uh, wife failed to organize your trip to South Africa and that we will be we will be instead instead have you actually been to visit El Salvador before no not yet that's Just so it's still on my bucket list but um, okay okay no, so hopefully no, no immediate rush saving yeah. the, saving the sats <laughs> So I'm sure you know it will happen at a more pro appropriate time. I think these all these things all, always always happen for a reason. Oh, fantastic! Um, so one of the uh, questions that uh, I'm I'm asking all of the people through this series of interviews, just because I think it's quite interesting and it just helps us to you know evolve the conversation around Bitcoin. You know, how did you initially discover Bitcoin? How how did that come about? So um, I wear a few hats outside of Bitcoin, less so now, actually. But one one of the hats I wear is that I do a little bit of business angel investing. And Bitcoin came across my desk as a bit of deal flow um, around about 2017. And um, I looked at it and went, wow, that, this is really interesting. And immediately got distracted immediately went oh look at all these other shiny coins and right. like a greedy magpie i got uh -huh. distracted and uh -huh. thought wow look at the returns these other coins are generating so put my hands up i took that traditional or rather common horseshoe journey through the bitcoin mm. space so mm. quite quickly i fell down the slippery slide of the of the, the, the horseshoe uh, down into the crypto space um, made a bit of money lost a lot of money and eventually came back to my senses uh, <laughs> when um, when I stopped being such a greedy magpie and oh, realized the rite that, of passage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And when I realized that the fundamentals of Bitcoin is where it where where it's all at, and uh, they those fundamentals stand strong. Um, so yeah, it came back to Bitcoin, and in, it was a couple of years ago. Met Simon and James actually, technically through Peter McCormack. Shortly after he bought Rail Bedford. Uh, oh. Or then, then it was Bedford FC. So shortly after he bought Bedford FC, and before he rebranded the club, I went along to go and support support the team had just acquired. And lo and behold, I was expecting actually a, a swathe of Bitcoiners because he's a big global podcaster. Mm. And um, there were about twenty people at this football match, I reckon. Wow! And ten of <laughs> ten of those were Bitcoiners. And five oh of goodness. those, yeah, five of those were Simon and his family, his wife, Simon, his wife, and his three daughters. Um, so a very small contingent of Bitcoiners. Um, so we got chatting and uh, went for drinks afterwards at the pub and realized that we had common goals in so much as we all wanted to live in a Bitcoin circular economy. And rather than work in silo um, in our own separate jurisdictions or separate um, geographic spaces, we decided to combine our efforts and form Bridge to Bitcoin so that we could onboard merchants all together. And I think we've got some really complementary skill sets, myself, James and Simon. Um, and then through that, met some other people, uh, met a guy called Peter Rounce, um, and he was just making a, an interesting inquiry about point of sale machines uh, for Bitcoin payments. And uh, I won't I won't go through the whole story, but through that at the end of that conversation, at the end of that physical meeting, uh, we came up with laser eyes cards, completely unintentional. It was mm -hmm. we were looking at bulk cards and he well, he was looking at making bulk cards uh permissionless and self-sovereign and self-custodial, um, which he has done. Um he's put it out, put it out on an MIT license. So yeah, on the back of that, we came up with laser eyes cards. Um, and yeah, the, the Bitcoin rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper. So there are a few other things, as I said earlier on in this call that um, I'm now getting involved in. Um, so yeah, I won't spoil surprises because uh, <laughs> some, some of the speakers are revealing some of those things um, at the weekend on Saturday. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a deep rabbit hole, actually. And I remember someone was talking about this the other day. How deep do you think you are down the rabbit hole? And it's, <laughs> it's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? Because... Where's yeah. the bottom of the rabbit hole? I mean, uh, yeah. it seems yeah. never ending. So you think you think you might be quite deep, but actually, 
how far does it keep on going <laughs> so much more yeah. so much more and i love what you illustrate there um about getting involved with bitcoin because of course it introduces you to new friends and other people with different skill sets um and uh you know i had a bit business coach once upon a time when i was trying to run my own little uh, business practice he said sometimes it's better to have a piece of a larger pie than to just do everything mm. by yourself and i think what what that's reflecting is the fact that you know people often work better in synergy you know it's impossible to be good at everything yourself and so you know if you're able to team up with different people who have different skill sets not only do you know your combined efforts then uh, result in something even greater than you could do by yourself but you also get the uh, the fun and the relationships that that go with it you know and and they are friendships that can last a lifetime and uh, sometimes that's the most rewarding thing about it i know that they're you know certainly the people i meet in bitcoin they're just so relieved to find other people who are on the same page because mm -hmm. often in their own personal lives it's like no one understands yeah yeah <laughs> so, absolutely yeah, yeah definitely when you, other, when you find your people it's so refreshing yeah and what's great about the space at the moment is that I know it's cliche, but we are still early. So everyone's working yeah. really hard to make Bitcoin yes. work. So there's this yeah. wonderful super networking effect. So yes. my message to, to listeners would be if you're thinking about getting involved in Bitcoin, jump yeah. in. Because as soon as you dip your toe in, you'll find that people will connect you really quickly. And that's one yeah. of the great things about coming to these conferences is the networking effect. Um, yes. You'll find that you'll, you'll find the odd person. And if, if there's no immediate connection with the person you're, you're speaking to, more than likely sooner or later, someone will introduce you to someone else and they go, oh, I think you should talk to so-and-so because yeah. the space that you currently work in, they're looking for a Bitcoin or someone who can build or someone in that industry. And before you yes. know it, you're super networking yourself into a sort of Bitcoin space or just another fiat space, which lends itself towards more Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, we're, we're in this wonderful time in Bitcoin where we're still really early. So come on down to the conference or the festival rather <laughs> and uh, get networking listen to the speakers as well, um, but during yeah. the breaks and uh, after the speakers get no networking because it's a wonderful space and hopefully you'll make some great connections. And if you don't know about Bitcoin, you're going to learn a hell of a lot because it's it's one hell of a lineup Chris and Mitch have put together, um, including yourself. Maybe this is an opportune <laughs> moment for me to turn the tables on you, Victoria. Why this not? Is, this is something I've been <laughs> threat threatening to do because I'm conscious yeah. that you, Victoria, you've, you've interviewed everyone uh, almost everyone else who's who's uh, speaking at the at the festival, uh, but no one's asked you any questions. So let's <laughs> let's turn. It was let's a cunning turn, plan. <laughs> yes, let let's turn the tables. Um, so you're you're speaking. You foiled it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're going to be speaking at the fest. So yes. tell, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be speaking about. I've had a little bit of a heads up because, as you say, you came down and spoke at, in Surrey yeah. at my meetup. Yes. But is is there going to be a little twist? And to the to the listeners who haven't heard you speak at all, what can yeah. they expect? Well, I always try and do something a little bit different because um, anyone who's watching uh, this interview on here, you know, can can look at uh, the other videos on my YouTube channel. I'm not particularly active on my YouTube channel, but what I do try and do is whenever I do a talk is I try and video it because often a lot of work goes into preparing a talk and, you know, the energy and, and the preparation and getting to the event. And so it's a real shame that you know, an individual talk that's had that much work put into it is kind of lost in time. So I do try and preserve them mm -hmm. um, with a video if if I can. And so, you know, one of the side effects of doing that is I can't really use the same talk and then go to lots of d different location and just repeat it. I mean, I've often thought that being a pop star must be really boring because you're kind of repeating the same songs over and over again. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you want to kind of have a bit of different flavor and a little bit of a different twist. And also you want to be mindful of the audience. And so um, on this occasion, because we're going to be based at Carlton Town Football Club, um, one of the things I'm aware of is their food bank initiative. Um, in fact, it was the first thing I was made aware of when, um, when before we just decided to move to the club because Mitch and his wife came to our local meetup while we were still at one of the pubs and restaurants in Nottingham. And uh, Chris, as he often does, he's even done it today, he was like, 
someone needs some zats. And it was the <laughs> it was the food bank initiative at Carlton Town Football Club. And I was just like, well, you know, I don't often come into contact with food banks, thankfully, mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm in a privileged position in life. But I have great sympathy for people who do need to access those services. Um, and so, you know, I was happy, happy to send a donation. So, you know, that was the first thing I was made aware of with Carlton Town Football Club. And then before we knew it, we were relocating there for our meetup. And so when I was thinking about my talk, it was just I like to try and make it relevant. And so knowing about this food bank and also linking in with the last um, talk that I did down in Surrey, I was starting to touch on, you know, why is it that Bitcoin solves poverty? Because, you know, a lot of people are really keen um, to talk about uh, how the price of Bitcoin is going to the moon. But I think as someone who's not in touch with what Bitcoin actually does, they look at that and they find it a bit distasteful. And I think especially in England, you know, there's a real culture of Christianity in this country. And in Christianity, unfortunately, you know, being poor is seen as a virtue, even though, you know, it brings so many, so many other bad aspects to your life. And so I was just like, we really need to change the narrative on this, because otherwise, I think there's going to be a whole host of people left behind. And I don't want the only people in Bitcoin to be the ones who are just greedy. You know, the whole thing about Bitcoin is, is, um, is the fact that uh, we want to uh, make the world a better place for everybody. It's not just about making a few people rich who got in early. It's about the fact that the dynamics of the financial system that we have at the moment is completely corrupt. And what we want to do is change that and have a fairer system uh, so that we solve things like poverty. Now, I don't think you're ever going to solve poverty completely, but you can certainly make the world a fairer place. Um, and I think really the key to understanding, you know, why we have poverty and therefore the key to solving it is really to understand the history of money, because even though Bitcoiners have maybe had a flavor of that, they maybe talk about what's happened with money uh, since 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard. But, you know, sometimes they might go a little bit further back and talk about what happened around the First and Second World Wars, but often they need to go a little bit further back. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is, is create a potted history uh, which tries to um, explain that, which is actually quite a challenging task because one of the things I do with my newsletters is that I often try and break it down. And often in those, those newsletters, there's quite a lot of detail. But, you know, what I'm trying to do is give people the edited highlights so that they've got a narrative that hopefully makes sense to them and puts it in context of Bitcoin. You know, this is the real reason why, you know, we want to adopt Bitcoin. This is the real reason why we think it's it's good for the world, because even though it's very rhythmical saying fix the money, fix the world. I mean, what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, it, it's difficult to get their head around it. And it's really difficult um, to, uh, you know, give people the answers in a five minute soundbite. And so, you know, I'm hoping by doing the video and also uh, by doing the talk and also by getting it videoed, it's it gives, you know, it really starts to, you know, add to what everyone knows about Bitcoin and, and take it to the next level. Um, and in fact, one of the reasons why I've ended up doing these interviews is because uh, I was originally going to record it, but they had someone else to do that. That was Josh, who I interviewed yesterday. And so yeah. the only job left was a live stream. Chris said, well, can you do a live stream? It's like, well, I don't usually do live streams, but I'll look into it for you. And then, of course, you know, once I'd got everything set up with that, it was just like, well, it's a waste just to do uh, the event mm. on the day. You know, why not make the most of it in the run up to the event? And so, you know, this is why I've started doing these these interviews as well. And so I've ended up becoming quite involved, more involved than, I'm, than I normally am with these events. But actually, I'm really enjoying it because, you know, it gives me an opportunity to maybe expand my skill set and get more involved. And also, I'm getting to know the other people involved mm. much more so than I would normally. And I'm really enjoying that. So that's really cool. <laughs> and it's a wonderful thing you, that you're doing with with these live streams as well, because I haven't seen at any other conferences where you're you get to you get to know the speakers a little bit more beforehand. Normally, at most conferences, you just get to see them on stage. If you're lucky, you might be able to catch them afterwards and maybe have a one on one for a few minutes before someone else yeah. in the queue, you know, yeah. get, gets a couple of minutes with them. So I, I love this this new thing that you've created, <laughs> where get to know the speaker beforehand, get a little. Yeah get a little teaser as to what they might be talking about. Maybe yeah. if you're coming to attend, you can line up some follow-up questions because you've got some exactly, kind of yeah. idea. No, it's, it's wonderful. And preserving the videos, yeah, I, th I think that's a fantastic thing. And um, yeah, it's interesting the whole repeating thing you mentioned mm. because, because this has been mentioned before, but um, it's what I find in the Bitcoin space is there are lots of 
bubbles, little mm. si silo bubbles. And mm -hmm. it's amazing. Certainly in my meetup and I've heard of others, um, I get new people turn up um, and they've heard about the meetup in the mm -hmm. most roundabout kind of way. And their interpretation of what Bitcoin is and even how it functions and how it should be or where it will end up sometimes is completely different to the narrative that's in my head or the narrative yeah. that I've heard from others. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, although although there's a danger of repeating, I think there's such a big audience out there that these these videos that you're recording, even if you kept them exactly the same verbatim, I think their their longevity um, would be enormous because we've we've hardly touched the sides in terms of the audience that we could touch. Um, yes. So I don't think we're in, in danger there, uh, but I love that you're tweaking it because I've heard your talk <laughs> maybe maybe three times now, and you're right, it is <laughs> it, it, it is different every time, and I I, I love how you're um, intertwining the food bank and how Bitcoin solves po poverty because um, it makes it a lot more relatable. I completely agree mm. with you. There is this sort of mantra of to the moon. And the, mm. the the worst one that I really don't like is have fun staying poor. Um, know. You know, that sends, sends such the wrong message. Um, mm -hmm. That's not what most of us are trying to do. Uh, as know. you say, we're trying to lift everyone else up rather than mm. leave people behind. We're not trying to replicate the fiat system. We're just, mm -hmm. we're trying to create a new, better system where everyone mm. rises up. But yeah, mm. it just makes it a lot more relatable. You know, I'm having this these conversations more and more with non-bitcoiners about inflation mm -hmm. and how people are complaining more and more about the prices of, of everything mm. so how it solves poverty and how it can help people at a relatable level i think is really important um and for me that's that's fantastic because uh, what i find at a lot of these conferences it's it can be very philosophical um, mm -hmm. And no, I don't mean to have a go our uh, Bitcoin philosophers, um, <laughs> which is great. The the philosophy questions and conversations are fantastic. But sometimes I feel that we do need a bit more action and a bit more relatability uh, mm -hmm. for those who are new to Bitcoin or haven't even come to Bitcoin. Because as you say, when when people are new to Bitcoin, when you dive straight in at the deep end into the philosophical arguments, it's people just haven't got the bandwidth they're just no. like, what are you talking about i can yeah you know i'm you know yeah prices, i'm struggling to pay the bills you know i'm looking yeah. at taking on a second job and yeah. you're talking about something i really don't understand and it really doesn't appear to have anything to do with my life um mm. and really interesting the christianity um um link as well there is definitely a a narrative i think that as bitcoin is excuse me as Bitcoiners, we haven't really tapped into there. Um, and there are there are a number of religious Bitcoiners in the space, mm. uh, but maybe because of, how can I put this? Maybe, well, it's, it's, it's a traditional, those who shout loudest get heard, don't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that would be wonderful to tap into uh, the, the more religious groups because I think it really mm. relates to, uh, well, pretty much, most religions, I think, because, um, well, I think I think one of our speakers might be talking a little bit about that. So once again, I won't I won't spoil too much um, by, <laughs> by going on too much about that. But Victoria, how did you first become involved with Bitcoin, and how has that evolved to today? Um, well, that was quite a story, actually, and and in fact, I thought the story was so interesting. I wrote a book about it, um, and uh, I do have a copy here. I hadn't prepared it especially for this interview, but I do just happen to have a copy at the side. So <laughs> it's like truth to K, how Bitcoin fixes this. Um, so uh, I was actually working as a dentist, and um, as a dentist, I mean, when I was studying to be a dentist, um, even before I went to den dental school, I was worried about you know how I'd pay for the education because you know my dad kind of said we well, can go if you like but you're kind of on your own I was like okay thanks um but I went to uh I went to a meeting when I was in in the sixth form up at Liverpool University and we met the students and I was asking them about this you know how do you afford the living costs and everything for five years because of course you're committing to be at university for five years and they said oh don't worry about it banks love dentists you know and um you can get you can get a loan and so you know I'd never had a problem you know, having having a loan. I, I was one of the students who ended up the most in debt when I was uh, when I was a student, and uh, you know, I ended up ended up becoming very comfortable with it. And so, 
you know, in 2007, I opened my first dental practice thinking it'll be fine. I was just interested in doing it in the right way. But before I knew it, um, I'd run through all my savings and I needed a loan. And of course, the point at which I needed a loan was September 2008, when every bank on the planet was no, not lending money to anybody. And I was like, how can this be? <laughs> you know, didn't plan for this. Um, and so, um, you know, I ended up having three very stressful years and I'd just given birth to my daughter, um, you know, which in some ways was good because I knew it would take time to build my business. So it meant that I had more time for her in the early days. But what I hadn't anticipated was the financial hit. Um, and I actually spent, you know, there are about three occasions when I was literally, if the patient I was treating hadn't been able to pay, if anything had gone wrong with that treatment and the patient had been able to pay me, I'd have been bankrupt the following week. It was that close. Wow. Um, and so, you know, when I finally got through all of that and I had a house that I needed to sell and, uh, it was valued on the housing market way too high in 2007, ended up taking me seven years before I could get the right price for it. So wow. I was stuck not being able to move, having to commute between my daughter's nursery and a school. Oh, it was so stressful. Anyway, finally, I sold the house. And when I did that, I was like, I never, ever in my life want to be in that situation again what the hell happened and so and and also i finally had some money after all those years of being constantly in debt i had a little bit of equity from having sold this house and it so this was really precious i was like what do i do with this um and one of the things i remembered that was that um you know when i was a kid if uh we went, my dad encouraged us to go to the post office and open a bank account because at the time they were paying 10% interest. And I remember, I remembered that because my dad actually walked mm. us through the process. And then, you know, I was looking at all these bank accounts where to save this precious money I finally had from selling my house. And I was lucky I've got 0.01%. I was like, what the hell happened? So, you know, it was, I, I really wanted to figure it out because, you know, if I was going to put my money in the best place, clearly there had to be somewhere, you know, why were they paying 10% in the eighties and now so much less yeah. in the two thousands. And so this is what made me really look into it. And on top of that, I'd always been, you know, working as a dentist, I'd always been, you know, caught up in the debate between NHS and private dentistry, which is mm -hmm. very much affected by the financial system. And although I hadn't got quite got to the financial aspects, I'd certainly studied a lot of the political issues. Um, and so I was really familiar with how that evolved. And of course, that all began after the Second World War. And so when I started investigating money, it really tied in with that really nicely. Um, and because actually investigating the whole NHS thing had been a real eye opener, I realized that re researching the history of money would be a real real eye opener and so it turns out i've actually been studying this for years i just didn't really you know mm. you can see where the problems are you just didn't realize where the solutions were yeah and so eventually i understood that you know a good form of money was gold and silver but as a business owner i was like well there's no well there's no way that you know businesses are going to start accepting gold and silver coins you know it's hard <laughs> enough to go to the bank to <laughs> deposit cash forget that um so i was like there has to be a digital solution and so I'd heard about Bitcoin, but I didn't really understand understand what it is, but I knew it was digital. So I started researching it. And when I understood that it was uh, software that was literally programmed to mimic the economic properties of gold, I was like, that is it. That's the solution. That's where we're going. And never look back. And even though, you know, that was 2016. And of course, you had the whole altcoin bubble in 2017. I kind of dabbled, but not heavily because my motivation mm. was never really um, getting rich, although it was fascinating watching what was what was going on at that time. It was more the fact that understanding, you know, this world is broken. And if there isn't anything to fix it, we are in a lot of trouble. And in fact, the conclusion I came to is that if it wasn't for Bitcoin, we were all completely stuffed. Mm. <laughs> So, you know, and and at the time, you know, I was still running my business, but not terribly happy as a dentist. And so I was just like, what? and, you know, I'd come home from work and I wasn't interested in dentistry at all. I was just spending hours learning about this Bitcoin stuff because so many things <laughs> fell into place. And so eventually I was like, clearly I've missed my vocation here. And so I just and I needed more Bitcoin. So I decided to sell my business and uh, and, uh, you know, see, well, Firstly, I needed some time off because I was still recovering from huge stress, you know, trying to run my business. But and I, obviously I have a I now have a teenage daughter. And so, yeah, it just really fitted well in my life at, the, at this point. So I'm lucky I, I'm not employed by anybody, but it means, you know, thanks to Bitcoin, I've got the time to kind of, uh, you know, use use the skills I have to help wherever I can. And so I'm just looking for little niches and I pop up 
here and there, wherever I feel it will be most helpful. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. And I, I love how the story is so common in terms of you get to the edge of that rabbit hole and it just sucks you down. I love that. You said it yourself. You were there up late at night just reading yes. more and more about Bitcoin <laughs> when you could have been studying dentistry, but instead you were reading more about Bitcoin and, and hopefully it leads to better things. So, but what was the first, your first on-ramp onto Bitcoin, if you like? Was it a podcast or... How did you, so you researched the history of money, but yeah. who who or what was it that that led you further down the rabbit hole? Well, I mean, I was, I was re honestly, it was researching the history of money. And so I literally came to the conclusion organically. And actually in 2016, there wasn't an awful lot around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they there was uh, a program on YouTube called the World Crypto Network. And now I'm actually, um, you know, one of the guests, one of the guests on that network, which okay. is amazing because that was, you know, that was what I was watching right at the beginning of time yeah. because they were doing a great show, really helping to educate people about what Bitcoin is. And, and it was really fun. And they had some great people contributing, contributing to that who were very lucid in what they were saying. So that really helped me to understand. I was also following Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante, and he had like a financial financial newsletter and I joined his Facebook group and on okay. his Facebook group um someone kept going on on about this person called Cliff High and um and so I was like who's this Cliff High person and at the time he was producing these ultra reports and part of these ultra reports were just really specific because I'd kind of got into this altcoin thing but I was a bit nervous I was just like oh am I really doing the right thing but with these all with these um Auto reports, he was using a computer program to analyze human language. And by doing it, he was able to, I mean, have you heard of Cliff High? No. No. So, but he was able to, he was able to go into uh, public forums where people discuss stuff. And by harvesting the language, he was able to make, he was able to um, pick up on psychic impressions because he started with the philosophy that everyone is inherently psychic. It's just that those, those abilities have been suppressed. Um, but and because they've been suppressed, they leak out in our language. And so he was able to pick up on these psychic impressions in the language and put them in a computer program. And he pro produced these reports, which were fascinating. They were really hard to read. They weren't particularly well written, really hard to read. But the information was amazing. And I think in October 2016, he predicted at the time the price of Bitcoin was about $500, $500 for a coin. And he predicted that by February um 2018 the price would be $13,888 and I was like whoa that's an amazing prediction um and it sounded ludicrous at the time but the thing is it then went through Christmas and and one of his monthly reports saying that Bitcoin would go through the price of $888 three times um and then we'll never see that price again and so everyone watched it do that and then realized that it was quite likely I mean along with other things he was predicting and realized it was quite likely that his prediction about 13,888 would come true and so of course just before that the price actually reached 20,000 and it was just phenomenal watching that so he ended up uh gaining a great following unfortunately shortly after that he predicted the price was going to be 100,000 by the end of the year and then it wasn't right. so you know that kind of <laughs> killed his <laughs> reputation but the thing is you know up until that point it was just phenomenal and actually especially with the other things that were in his report i just found it so interesting i mean one of the things he he talked about was pandemics and this was in like 2016 2017 i mean no oh, wow. one knew mm. that that was happening at the time and actually as a business as in my own little business because i just had a dental surgery above um a hairdressing salon and um it made me realize you know if there were something like a global pandemic how vulnerable i was so that was also a motivation for me to sell my business and so you know i owe cliff high a lot because although um although uh, I discovered Bitcoin myself. It was his reports that really gave me the confidence that this had long term potential and actually encouraged, you know, gave me some insight as to why I should sell my business when I did. Um, and actually, as we all know, that's worked out extremely well. Um, so, you know, so it's from this, you know, in terms of my life path, it's been from the ridiculous to the sublime, you know, it's like mm. two extremes, almost bankrupt to, you know, having the freedom to pursue yeah. something that i'm interested in for which i'm incredibly grateful um but yeah you know without 
being led to some of that information at the time. But again, it was a result of searching because there wasn't much information. Yeah. I just went after the information um, that was available. And because I was just so curious, I mean, that's my, you know, my dad said, even as a kid, that was one of my defining qualities. I was just really curious. Um, and that curious curiosity eventually paid off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everyone's touch points, especially around about your era, my era, are so different. Yes. Um, and, but, but on the flip side, coming back to what I was saying earlier, that's why it's such a wonderful time to get into Bitcoin now, because there's yeah. so many more resources and there's so much more weight behind the resources that are available. You've got the KPMG report that was really positive in terms of ESG that was uh, released a while ago and a whole plethora of other writings and reports as well. Um, I'm conscious You're that you like to keep... their mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. I'm conscious you like to keep these these interviews short and sweet, Victoria. So Aww. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you your next question that you normally Go ask on, us. I'm gonna uh, mirror <laughs> it back to you. So what are you most looking forward to um, about uh, the Bitcoin Fest? Well, I just you know the thing I love particularly about this meeting is the way in which it's come together. You know, it started off uh, with you know, well, Mitch moved us all to the football club. Club, you know, Chris was really enthusiastic about. You know, we wanted a location where they actually accepted Bitcoin, and yeah. because the the football club were willing to play along, um, they did that. They sponsored some of the boards around the match, which obviously support the club. And then, as the fans started coming in, they were like, "What's this? What's this Bitcoin thing?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're wondering who these strange people in the corner who always seem to be there, you know, once yeah. a month. Um, and uh, as a result of that curiosity, it inspired an event because, you know, so many, so many, so often, you know, these events um, are organized because the Bitcoiners want them. Um, but because it was was inspired by people asking about this Bitcoin thing, like Chris was, well, what can we do? And by that stage, I've done a talk to the local Bitcoin group. And we've got Darren, who I've done an interview with. He does amazing workshops. And it was just like, wow, you know, just amongst our little group, we've got such amazing resources. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great to share it with everybody? And then as the as the event started coming together, you know, people would just contribute where they could. I mean, um, you know, Roger, who uh, helped really get the Nottingham uh, meetup going, you know, he uh, you know, he's been really enthusiastic on each of my videos. He's the first person to comment even before we go live, you know, to give me some support <laughs> and make sure I've got the likes and the comments. So like and comment and subscribe, everybody. It really helps us. Um, and uh, and then Chris was saying, oh, I don't know if we should have a magician because we're talking about the balloons and the banners. And he was like, should we have a musician, a musician, uh, magician? And they were like, does anyone know a magician? And someone said, I do. I'll pay for the magician. That'll be my contribution. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And of course, every time someone witnesses is that it inspires someone else to do something yeah. and so you know it's not that this event hasn't cost money but it's really been brought together by all of the organizers and the speakers the people who are really passionate about it and as a result most of the tickets are free and if you want to see in in shelter to see the speakers and a bacon cob and a gift bag worth 20 quid you only have to pay for a five pound vip ticket and you know i think that's unheard of in bitcoin mm. as well so it's just a really unique event and uh, I just love everyone involved and everyone who's come together and you know all of these people and the fact that I've had an opportunity you know for me I think it's yeah, I'm hugely privileged to have been able to interview you all and uh, you know the skills that I'm developing as well and my daughter's going to have an opportunity with, and with a bit of pressure <laughs> to come and join in and uh, take part as well and so yeah I'm, I'm just looking for everything and all the activities you know the magician the musician I can't get it right. The musician, <laughs> Coach Carbon, and uh, yeah. the games he's playing, and then Chris with his SAT scoreboard. It's just so unique. I mean, I've been yeah. to a number of Bitcoin conferences and meetups now. I haven't seen anything else like it. And so, yeah, I just think it's going to be great. How yeah. about you? <laughs> I, I, very similar in so much. Um, I, I loved how from the off, Chris and Mitch have been very open. And yeah. it's been very, very much an open source project, if you like, in terms of really up for the suggestion so i've loved certainly from a work perspective though those are the kind of people you want to work with those who lap up ideas and then yeah. take an idea and run with it um and i remember on one of the calls chatting with chris and saying oh you know have you thought about have you been in contact with zebedee they do mm. scoreboards because yes. and 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 hats off to to the other chris chris um co-founder of zebedee um yep. he 
I've seen him at a few events actually and he's um he's quite softly spoken Chris and yeah. I think one of the first events I actually um spoke with him at was an event at in Wandsworth in southwest London at a bowling alley so that was put on by the Bitcoin Collective and I think Ashley Giles helped organize it as well and he did a little presentation and a little talk and that was the first time I had a proper look and saw what he's going to be doing at the festival this weekend yeah. in so much as he had up on the big screen um, a way of snapping the QR codes and donating sats and you could put a message up and it was really good fun it got a little bit out, out of hand because uh, a few people <laughs> had too many drinks and so there were a few words that maybe shouldn't come up on the screen but that wasn't chris's <laughs> fault that was just those who had, had a few too far too, few yeah. too many drinks um and then i saw chris again at the bitcoin fest um last year um in somerset organized by darren um and i was sitting with him watching joe martin who's one of our musicians yeah. is going to be at the fest and there were a couple of other musicians as well we had we had roger 9000 at that and um another, yeah, I another love roger. Musician as well. he's so good yeah. <laughs> he's great isn't he yeah. um and uh joe martin had his qr code where you could donate but the other musicians they didn't have anything up and um, up and running yes and chris I happened to be this. sitting next to me and i turned yeah. around to him at the time knowing yeah. how good he is. And I said, can you spin something up now quickly? Cause yeah. you can, I've seen you do it. And he yeah. literally sat in his laptop and created <laughs> something that we could literally plug into the big screen behind them as they were doing their set and people could donate the sats there. And then it took him what one or two minutes to do it. Um, yeah. So coming, coming back to what I was saying, it was great to sort of link Chris with the other Chris, too many yeah. Chris's. There um, are a lot of Chris's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great to meet to link chris the organizer with chris of zebedee um, yeah. and fantastic that they run with it because um you know this is something i've been looking forward to seeing because uh, we we press this upon uh, something similar to peter mccormack in terms of people have mentioned it to peter mccormack and doing something with real bedford where i know bitcoiners have said to peter yeah. why don't why don't you set up wallets for the players and we can tip them and mm. you know th th he's got lots on his plate at the moment yeah. so you know that's you know it's in, in fair fair play to him you know he's got he's juggling a lot um trying but, to do it all himself that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fantastic that chris yeah. and mitch have picked this up and and chris of zebedee have put this together so i'm really looking forward to seeing that up and running um, and all all the the other little side events that are happening as well. So I've I've never seen uh, Darren the Crypto Donkeys workshops before. So mm -hmm. I'm quite looking forward to to seeing Darren. So shout that, out that, to Darren. Yeah, that'll be my that'll be my first <laughs> first time. Um, and yeah, I think it'll be really exciting for beginners as well. So I think, I'm hoping mm -hmm. we're going to see lots of beginners. Um, it's there's going to be prizes so i know chris has got a quiz lined up there'll be yes, free sats. i love chris's quizzes they're great yeah oh good good <laughs> i'm looking forward to that um there'll be there, there might be some other surprise quizzes just to give you a little sneaky sneaky preview there um and and, and i love that it's going to be family friendly as well so there's going to be face yeah. painting there's going to be the training pitches open so hopefully yeah. i'm not sure if coach coach carbon's going to be doing anything on the training pitches but i know he's I doing he is, a yeah. talk oh great um yeah. And the magician as well. Um, so really exciting. Lots of all the side events, but the as you, as you mentioned, those extra new bits that we haven't seen before, like the price structure, where it's yeah. free. Just turn yeah. up and learn about Bitcoin, yeah. or pay five pounds and get twenty yeah. pounds worth of goodies back. Thank you, yeah. thank you to Coin Corner and the others who put goodies in the, in those goodie bags. And yeah, the the what Chris of Zebedee has built. Um, that should be really good fun seeing that that come up on the scoreboard. And seeing how that pans out so lots of new things happening or, or rather yeah. this festival is bringing lots of new things to a conference that we haven't seen before um, yeah. and at, at ground roots level so I, yeah i'm keeping my fingers crossed we'll see lots of newbies and we can um, teach them a little bit about bitcoin and give them some free sats i'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> all the all the lightning faucets that chris is plonked around the ground uh, so heads up on that there will be yes, some free yeah. sats flowing around 
um yeah it should be exciting and i'm looking forward to catching up with the bitcoiners that i know as well and Always seeing you the best in, bit. yeah, yeah. Seeing, seeing you in person as well victoria Aww. and what, what's <laughs> nice is because i'm emceeing so yeah. what traditionally happens at conferences and i'm sure it's the same with you and many other bitcoiners you end up going to a conference and i, I me personally i i end up not seeing the talks that i want to go and talk see yeah. because i end up networking just yes. chatting to other bitcoiners and before yeah. i know it the conference is done i haven't seen any of the talks i've wanted to see but i've made some great connections and made some new friends um at this one because i'm emceeing i'm going to have to listen to all the talks yes. um so yeah i'm looking forward to being forced <laughs> to actually listening to all the talks listen we've to got... the speakers yes yeah because sometimes um, you'll say oh I'll just i'll just watch the live stream back again later but you don't necessarily exactly. so sometimes it's definitely worth being there and just on the subject of chris's quiz actually one thing i don't think i've mentioned yet in the interviews is that we're actually gonna what he does is he he puts up a, a QR code so that anyone who scans the QR code can join in the quiz. And so what we're going to try and do is include it on the live stream so that even people mm -hmm. who are watching on the live stream can can take part. So even the live stream is going to be interactive. Guys, wow. you haven't seen anything like this. You wow. have to be there. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll be giving a shout out to all those who are watching on the live stream as well. So, yeah, so hopefully you won't feel lonely if you are watching it live on the stream. Absolutely. You'll feel you'll feel part of the room if you like. So yeah, it should be really exciting, really good fun. So if if you're listening to this either recorded or live now, get yourself down there. Um, sign up for a free ticket because I think you've said all the VIP tickets are sold. Um, yes. That, yeah, we've that, still got the free tickets, but you have to sign up because you'll we'll need to take your name at the gate for a wristband and all that yeah. palaver because we have yeah. to make sure for fire eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, so. for for numbers, make sure it's yeah. not overcrowded. So yeah, sign up, sign up, come along. It should be a great free event, and you'll end up if you come along, you'll end up going home with more Bitcoin than you arrived. <laughs> I mean, what more could you ask for? You're going to meet some great people, learn some yeah. new things and go home with more Bitcoin. It should be fantastic. Uh, but yeah, thank you for organizing these live streams. As I said earlier in the call, Victor, it's a great idea. Great. I've loved listening to, to the speakers and learning a little bit more about them, and especially Aww. the ones that I I haven't come across before, like I say, like Darren, uh, of, yeah. uh, Darren the Crypto Donkey. So great yeah. idea, doing a great job. Aww. Looking forward to listening. I think tomorrow you've got Mick, the club manager. The, That's right. The, Ooh, I have so, done your homework. <laughs> of course, I always bring the receipt. So yeah, if you're listening to this, tune in tomorrow <laughs> to listen yep, to... Yeah, six o'clock, and then we've got oh. Ben Ark at eight. Yeah. Ben Ark, ben ben Ark. Ark. the hardest to track down <laughs> well it's because he's probably our biggest name on that's on, true, the, yeah. on the list yeah. so yeah he should be a big draw so if you're a lightning fan uh, or you love playing around with lightning or switches um ben Ark will be here he's doing a talk and a workshop um yes. i'm a little tentative as to what he's going to do on his talk because it could be anything his skill it could be no anything wife. so <laughs> this time last year he was doing a talk at bedford and yeah. he was trying to electrocute um, Peter McCormack. Oh, so dear. <laughs> I was cheering Ben Ark on, and that yeah. might come back to bite me on the ass. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Ben Ark. So, yeah, he's always a big draw. So, hopefully, those who are yeah. already in the space are interested in, in that side of Bitcoin uh, will come along yeah. too. But yeah, well done, Victoria. Loving oh, the live streams. Thank you. And yeah, oh, looking great. forward to seeing you and all the others and meeting some new people on Saturday. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm so pleased we've got you as MC, Chris. You know, you know so many people in the space. I can't think of anyone better oh. to keep the flow going during the day. So, you know, I think it'll make uh, it even more awesome. So oh, thank you thank so you much for, for turning up. Um, I'm so grateful to your wife for not booking that uh, holiday <laughs> to South America. And uh, is she coming too with the kids? They will be in Nottingham. Um, okay. So uh, I don't you can't if, bring it to bring, come to another Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I might have maxed out my sort of Bitcoinness with Fair them. Um, so enough. the last conference I took them to was Madeira, and oh. that to finish off, that, that's quite a funny story. So it was it that the Andre and the rest of the uh, Bitcoin Atlantis team did a great job. It was family friendly event, much like this one's going to be this weekend. Um, mm. Uh, so that's why I brought the family along. And my kids loved it as well. Um, much like at the Bitcoin Fest this weekend at Madeira, they had this great big art wall um, that Ooh. kids could colour in. So we're going to have the same at the Bitcoin Fest this weekend, for those who don't know. Um, 
so that's why I brought the kids along because I thought they're going to learn. They're going to learn lots about Bitcoin because there's a kids' corner and it's a really family friendly event. Um, and my kids came back and loved it. They had a great time. Um, but on the on the flip side, my wife afterwards, when we were back in the UK, she said to me, "Chris, I I think we've we've got a problem." I said, "Oh, what's the problem? The kids, they're um." They won't stop talking about Bitcoin. I went, what, what do you mean? I have no that, problem that with that. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't sound like a problem. <laughs> well, what, what do they keep on saying? Yeah. They keep on saying it's the best. And I went, <laughs> well, they're right. I still don't see a problem. And yeah. they're talking about inflation. I'm like, that's brilliant. My kids are nine and five years old. You know, we don't know any other kids who talk about inflation. Yeah. But Chris, they're going around telling everything the money's broken and Bitcoin will fix things because inflation's really bad. But Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't have inflation the way that fiat money does. And she's like, yeah. this is a problem. Kids don't talk like this. And I said to her, no, this, this was the whole point. The social capital is going down. Yeah. <laughs> Among so, kids, not against the adults. Especially yeah. the Bitcoin, so my kids yeah. loved it. But my, my wife came back going, oh, my, her head had exploded. I mean, she <laughs> she is in Bitcoin because yeah. I'm in Bitcoin. Um, oh. um, but I don't know if she'll be able to jump headfirst back into a Bitcoin space. So I'm going we'll to hopefully get her to come. She'll let you come. <laughs> yes, but I'm going to hopefully um, lure her and the kids um, out to make the the very short journey from where we're staying um, in Nottingham oh. over to Carlton Town Football Club. Um, if anything, just so they can get their face painted and have a kick around on the training pictures and and paint on the uh, on the art piece wall. Uh, that's yeah. being set up and hopefully uh, my wife will um more bitcoin synergy will seep into her <laughs> and she won't feel oh. she won't feel such a toxic energy feel oh. be a softer energy at nottingham <laughs> which is what i'm hoping for but anyway oh. I, I shall stop Brilliant. rambling on so yeah that's Not at all. That, Not that's at all. what i'm hoping i'm hoping that they will make their last couple of miles to the yeah. fest um, but they oh. will be at nottingham <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, don't worry about the time at all. We've kind of fitted in a double interview. And so on that basis, I think we timed it just right. It was perfect. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, everybody. Um, if you have, please give us a like and a comment and uh, share it with your friends. Uh, we're still a number of tickets available. So please come on down. Uh, we'd be delighted to see you. All right. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you, everybody. And see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>